Hi and welcome. Today we talk about stock and flow. You probably have heard about this metric already. It's a metric that predicts Bitcoin price and it can give you a very good idea where the price will go, taking out the guessing. Let's jump into the presentation and find out how you can use the stock to flow model to help you getting in and out of positions or just predicting where the price will go. Stay till the end of the video to find out if now is actually a good time to buy or sell. After watching this presentation, you will understand how the stock to flow ratio will really work. Don't skip any parts of it because all the parts are important for you to understand how the stock to flow value is actually working. What is the stock to flow model? How does it really work? There are important points, which one is scarcity metric, measuring a commodity's scarcity by comparing existing supply to production rate. What that means is in Bitcoin, you have a certain amount of coins mined already and a certain amount of coins that are not mined. The same in gold. You have a gold mine, you have mined gold already above earth and you have still gold in the earth. This is the scarcity metric. There's a simple formula, it's called S to F, so stock to flow. And it's basically calculated that you take the existing supply and divide it by the flow. It's the annual production. In Bitcoin, this would be however many Bitcoins will be mined in a year, for example, and then you divide it by the flow. In gold and silver, a high S to F indicates great scarcity. And the same is true for Bitcoin. How S to F works in Bitcoin? You have the capped supply, which is 21 million. You have the current stock, approximately 19 million coins in circulation. That means these coins are mined already and they are flowing around in big wallets, small wallets, on exchanges. This is the supply, like you could see in gold, all the gold we see now in the world as whatever it is, jewelry or in some electronics or as or spars or whatever it is. This is in Bitcoin, the 19 million coins that are circulating. Decreasing flow, new Bitcoin mined yearly half every four years. We have the Bitcoin halving. If you don't know what the Bitcoin halving is, every four years, there's just half of the Bitcoin mine. A very simple example would be, let's say this year, there would be 100 Bitcoin mined, which is not the right number, just to make it easy for you. 100 Bitcoin mined this year. In four years, there will be just 50 Bitcoin mined at this next four years. And then the next four years, there will also be just 25. And so it goes down. With the halving process, you're actually limiting the supply. And we see now the demand is really skyrocketing. And what happens logically? If you have a rising, really rocketing demand and a downgoing supply, it's very logical that the price needs to adopt. What happens then is that the buyers are actually more likely to give, spend more money on the asset because it's scarce. You have to convince the sellers with a higher price, with a higher fiat price to sell it to them. So here we have one more example that you can go through that shows you how the halvings actually work and how the supply is getting limited. The stock to flow model predicts the Bitcoin price on its increasing scarcity. We will later on look at the charts just in a second to show you what is really going on live. What is the criticism the model was not always right, as you see. One of the criticisms is that the demand is actually not looked at in this model. So it's just basically the supply, but the demand dynamics, the market adoption, and some other factors are not considered in this model. Then we have correlation is not causation. So just because it happened for this time frame, and we have a just very short time frame for Bitcoin, as you know. And then it was also diverging from the model, as we will see just in one of the next slides. So 
it was not always following the stock to flow model. So what are the key takeaways before we jump into the chart? It's quantifying scarcity. The halving events matter very much because they are halving the supply. And it's one tool of many. Let's now jump into the charts and look at such a stock to flow chart so you can understand how it works. I'm using a stock to flow chart that is on Bebo. So you can go to charts.bebo.io and have a look at the charts. They have got a lot of charts and they have here a stock to flow tab where you can click and you have a lot of the stock and stock to flow charts. So let's have a look and go through all the factors that are important for you. You have here this line. This is basically the predicted price. And the dots here are actually the actual prices, the prices of the day. If you go to that, so you see here, for example, here we have, this is around now. And the colors of the dots indicate how far this time frame is away from the halving. If you look here on the right side, it says days until next halving. If it's zero days till the next halving, it's blue. If it's getting green, then it's around 400 to 800 days away from the halving. And then it turns actually here in, into red. And then it starts with blue again. What does this tell us? You see the blue one is actually the halving when it's happening, so zero. And what happens then? It goes out this direction basically and starts from here because the days from zero, then there's the halving happening and then it starts red again because then we have the 1,400 days and then it goes down to the green and to the blue again. Here was the halving. Then we get into the red area, which the red area is here. We are 1,400, 1,200 days away from the halving. Always if this red area jumps up here and goes into the orange, normally this is where the price skyrockets. Here until the green area, until the yellow area at least. And when it gets more green, it almost every time goes down in the last cycles. And we are just here starting in this orange area. So you could say we are around here or around here. And you can always see if you hover over that line here or that area where the price is predicted to go, you can see the date here down there. If I have my cursor here at the bottom of my screen, you will see the dates all the time. And then you see the stock to flow prediction line here. We see the actual price of the dots over here. They have used a different metric down there. To calculate it, you can read that for yourself. Just head over to charge.ebo.io and go to the stock to flow chart to find out how it works. So I hope the video was useful. Leave a like, subscribe, and I see you in my next video. Bye-bye. See you.